How's it going everyone? This is Mr. Anku. Today we're going over some herb lore methods for Iron Man that are AFK in old school runescape. These methods will mostly be melee and ranged based, and they will generate you stacks of herbs, seeds, and most importantly, noted herb lore secondaries. Herb lore has been typically a difficult skill to train on Iron Man, and AFKing these mobs will ensure you have plenty of resources stacked in the bank to send that herb lore level to 99. Up first, we have Flesh Crawlers located in the Stronghold of Security. Now don't doubt these mobs just because they're in free to play. When in members worlds, these guys drop Ranar Weeds, and they can be fought at an extremely low level. This AFK spot can stack your Ranars very, very early in the game, and these mobs also only hit one for their max hit, meaning you can last forever here while being AFK. This is such a good low effort method for early and mid game accounts. I recommend starting this method as early as being able to wear adamant armor, but you can do this method as a mid game iron having much longer trips as your defense will be much higher. I remember doing this on my iron when I still had barrows gear and a torso. Also, don't forget to either bring a dragon battle axe for its special attack, which can boost your strength or an Excalibur for its defense increasing special attack. So to get started, go to Barbarian Village and enter the stronghold like this. Follow the exact path that I'm showing you now on screen, and we'll want to go into this room. So try to stand on this tile here, and as you can see, that yellow line on the ground represents the monster's aggression zone cutoff. If we were to step over this line, it would reset the monster's aggression after it had stopped attacking me. That takes about 10 minutes. This plugin is called NPC Aggression Lines if anyone is interested in using it. I keep this baby on all the time. Lastly, for this method, I just have to mention this insanely interesting fact, and that is that these flesh crawlers also drop pieces of the skull scepter, which can be used to charge this actual scepter or its imbued variant. The skull scepter is a really overpowered item for arterial skipping because it can teleport you directly to the stronghold of security, in which nearly half of Turiel's task list lies. Up next we have the Undead Druids in the Forthos dungeon, and these are one of the most cracked AFKs in the game for Iron Man, as they drop noted Eyes of Newts, Potato Cactus, White Berries, and Wines of Zamorak. And not only that, but they drop these in high quantities, and again they are dropped as noted. It's like these guys were designed for AFK and herb lore in this game. These druids are also located directly next to an altar. So you can easily AFK here as long as you remember to keep your prayer up. You can even use a salve amulet here, which I recommend doing, which will increase your damage output by about 20%. I also want to mention that these mobs are an amazing method for obtaining runes and other supplies on your Iron Man, since they drop tons of runes helpful for the mid and early game. Not to mention that they also drop hard clues at a rate of 1 in 100. Now when fighting these guys, we want to be praying mage the entire time, and do not let your prayer drop, or you're going to have a horrible day. I find that wearing ranged void here is extremely effective, as the mobs here are weak to range. I would not recommend meleeing them. If you don't avoid, I really would say just wear your best range gear, or even consider wearing monk robes just so your prayer can last longer. Where I'm standing is where you will want to be standing as well. These druids can melee you if they walk into melee distance, but that is quite uncommon for that to happen in this specific spot, so keep that in mind. Now I also do want to mention that these druids do drop the grubby key, but let's cover that in the next AFK method. That being the red spiders also located in the Forthos dungeon. So these spiders are such a good AFK spot as well because they are an amazing source of noted red spider eggs that drop up to five at a time. So they do drop the grubby key, which can be used on the grubby chest, also found within the dungeon. And this has rewards inside such as like Ceridome and Brews, Super Restores, Sharks, Super Strength, Attack and Defense Potions. I would definitely recommend using this AFK on your Iron Man as you'll stack hundreds of red spider eggs here while also just training your account and building up your bank in other different and important areas with those Ceridome and Brews and other supplies. Lastly, these spiders also do drop hard clues. So make sure to mark and have the notifications on for the drops that you're interested in picking up. To get to the spot, I teleport to the glade using the Xerix Talisman, or you could use your house teleport if it's located in Hosidias. Then run to these eastern ruins and climb down into the dungeon. Once in the dungeon, here's where I stand while fighting these spiders. 
However, I do have a few marked tiles. Uh, you can stand at different spots. I would choose the one that works best for you and your setup. So speaking of setups, I recommend wearing Guthans here. If you do wear Guthans here, you really won't have to eat. Uh, however, you can do a proselyte prayer method where you're praying melee. You can also wear tank armor here and just stand in one of the corners. And you really shouldn't have to eat too often. However, I would not suggest doing this on an early game account. Start this method at about 70 or 80 defense when you have access to barrows or moons of peril equipment. Up next, we have AFKing Dagonoths in the Catacombs of Zaya. This is a classic AFK banger, guys. This method is so busted as these Dagonoths drop a ton of seeds important for herblore training methods. Here's an image on screen of their seed drop table. While these Dagonoths also drop extremely useful seeds, they also provide an excellent AFK for shards and totem pieces, as well as medium clues. This AFK is very profitable and is one that goes well with your Slayer tasks as Dagonoths are also assigned pretty commonly. On top of this, the Dagonoths here only use melee attacks, so they can be prayed against fully when using Protect from Melee. So to get started with this method, we'll want to go to Korend using the standard spellbook. We then run like this and use the shortcut into the Ankus and run left into the Dagonoth room. I prefer wearing full Guthans here and bringing combat potions. You can also just wear full tank gear as well and just stand in the corner. Or you could wear a full proselyte and pray melee, which is a really, really good option as well. If you're doing the protect prayer method here, you'll take zero damage. And I recommend bringing a bone crusher if you have one, since burying the bones in the catacombs will automatically recharge your prayer every time a Dagonoth is killed. Here's where I like to stand when wearing my full Guthan set to get the most out of my AFK time. You can even wear a ring of wealth here for its auto coin pickup function, which will also profit you a small amount passively for the sacrifice of some DPS. I personally would prefer a Zerker ring or something that would boost my strength. Also, don't forget that if you are using full proselyte, bring an ancient mace and spec your POH dummy before heading here, just for that fat prayer level top off. This is an absolutely classic AFK that everyone should know about. All right, guys, on to the next one. I wanted to give this one an honorable mention as it's a little different from what I've just shown. That is AFKing blue dragons in the Myth Guild dungeon. These dragons drop the scaly blue dragon hide, which can be used for herblore training methods and making anti-fire potions. And this is really the only AFK method I'm aware of, of getting the scaly blue dragon hide. This method is also pretty unique because you can stack dragon bones here. And at the moment, dragon bones are pretty profitable. They rake in about 4K per bone. So I think that's just due to the most recent bot bannings. So for this setup, I do recommend wearing full proselyte. What I also like to do is bring my Karamja gloves so I can quickly bank and reset if I need to. And I bring a house teleport as well so I can hit my Ornit pool. So we're going to go into the basement and run over here to these blue dragons and stand near these marked tiles. What you can do to make this more AFK as you're just waiting for your scaly blue dragon hide drops is pick up the bones every four or five kills. And typically they won't despawn in that time. And this will give you about two to three minutes of AFK time if you are picking bones up. Now in this example, I am picking bones up. And what I'll do is then once I have a full inventory, I'll teleport to Karamja with my Karamja gloves. I'll use this de bank deposit box, and then I'll teleport back to my POH, hit my Ornit rejuvenation pool, and then teleport directly back in which I can continue with this AFK method. I have a couple weapons in my inventory that I feel could do the job here. Personally, I'm gonna use the Fang since dragons are weak to stab, but to be honest with you, you can really use most of weapons that are DSIM or equivalent and above. So let's get on to the next method, everyone. That being Karasks in the Ironworth dungeon. This is another OG AFK method for Iron Men. And these bad boys aren't just great for racking up combat XP, but they're also your ticket to stacking up essential herb lore supplies without really lifting a finger. So why Karasks? These monsters drop noted white berries. And if you're serious about herb lore, you know how crucial those are for making super defense potions. Instead of running around collecting them yourself from your bushes while farming, you can just AFK them here and watch the berries pile up. But wait, there's actually more. Karasks also drop coconuts. These little guys are, are key for making anti-venom potions, which you're going to need to stay safe from all the venom and poison out there, especially with Araxor in the game. 
So this spot isn't just about combat XP, you are stacking Herblore supplies and just building your bank with every kill, since these Karasks can also drop 10k at a time. This is another good spot to wear that Ring of Wealth if you're interested in picking up the coins. So to get rolling, just make sure you're bringing a leaf bladed battle axe or a leaf bladed weapon such as the leaf bladed sword or spear. Karusks can only be damaged by these or broad bolts or broad arrows, so just don't forget that. I would personally recommend using the battle axe just for the best damage. And don't forget to grab some food and then head to Prif. Once you're there, head to the Ironworth dungeon and you'll find the Karusks right in this room. This place is really perfect for AFKing because it's just quiet and these mobs don't really hit too often making it easy to just chill out while they drop you noted loot. And they even drop crystal shards for corrupting the bofa later on, so keep that in mind. Pro tip, bring a herb sack to scoop up any herbs you find here, and leave plenty of room for those juicy noted drops. If you're lucky enough to have a slayer task of Karasks, wear a slayer helm. And if you're not on tasks, don't even worry. There's still a chill AFK method, and you can even make some good cash here with the rune and adamant drops. Also guys, don't forget your elk runes for this method. Alright everyone, so if you stuck around for this long, I'm going to be claiming my kingdom rewards. Now it has been a while, before I claim them, I am going to show you one last tip for this video that I learned long ago about this place regarding gaining your favor in an extremely fast way. What we'll do is we'll stand here at this farming patch, and we'll rake it down fully. Then rake the left patch until it's completely gone as well, and wait until the right patch respawns. Once it respawns, rake the right patch once again, and after you're finished raking, the right patch for the second time, hop worlds. Once you've done this, as you can see, both patches are now fully respawned. And if you just rinse and repeat this method, this is a really fast way of gaining favor for your kingdom. Uh, if you're just topping it off, or if you're just starting from zero, all right, and now let's get to the rewards themselves. Let's go. All right, guys, so this is a pretty decent reward. As you can see, what I'm really hunting for are those bird's nests and those Ranar stacks. So anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please leave me a like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Peace out.